Greetings from Calvary Lutheran Church. John chapter 20 verses 19 through 23 says, On the evening of that first day of the week, the disciples were together behind locked doors because of their fear of the Jews. Jesus came, stood among them, and said to them, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. So the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. Just as the Father has sent me, I am also sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whenever you forgive people's sins, they are forgiven. When you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. How can you say that you forgive my sins? I've had that question asked of me several times by visitors here at one of our worship services. And that's a good question to look at. How can a mere man forgive sins? Is there really forgiveness taking place when the pastor says, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? Or is that just some wishful thinking? Well, look at these verses from John chapter 20. Jesus had just risen. And practically the first thing that he does is appear to his disciples. Why? To hand to them something great that he won at the cross. Forgiveness of sins. And then Jesus commissions them. He sends them out into the world. Just as the Father sent him out into the world. They are to be his representatives to do God's work, just as Jesus did the work of his Father. And what is that work? To forgive sins. And so Jesus breathes on them. Perhaps you recall the creation of Adam, how God formed Adam from the dust of the earth and then breathed into him the breath of life, and there he was, a living man. Well, here Jesus is creating something new. Not just one thing, but many people to go out and serve the Lord and do the will of God. That there's symbolism in this verse here in, when you look at the Greek language. The Greek word for breath is the same word for spirit. And thus, as Jesus breathes on them, he's giving to them the Holy Spirit to live in them, and to give them the power and authority to do what God wants. And what is it that God wants? It includes the forgiving of sins. And realize that same spirit lives in you and continues to live in you. That is why you can be sure that when the pastor says, I forgive you all your sins, those sins are forgiven. Jesus promised. He said, whoever sins you forgive, they are forgiven. And realize that that same wonderful power and responsibility and privilege has been given to you as well as all Christians. And so if you know someone who's going through a process of guilt, grieving over something they've done in the past, beating themselves up over it, Remind them of what Jesus has done for them, how Jesus died on the cross and paid for all sins of all people of all time, that he's taken those sins away and in him that they have forgiveness. And speak those words, I forgive you all your sins. And know that they are as true as when the pastor says them, because Jesus so promised. And we pray. Dear Lord, thank you for your wonderful gift of forgiveness. Please comfort us with it and help us to comfort others with that same message of forgiveness. Thank you for living and dying for us to win eternal life and salvation for us and for all. Help us to take the opportunities to tell others about you and what you have done for them. Amen.